The time has come for the last assault upon the fortress of Dol Guldur. The fighting begins, even as a smaller force enters the citadel in secret, prepared to face their final foe. In this case, we have the attack coming in three ways. We have a big force making a clamor all over at the gates and all through the areas of Dol Guldur. We have the way cleared by that larger force for an assault on Barad Guldur being made by the raid, which is one of the raids that's in Lotro. And meanwhile, while all that's going on, I'm climbing in in secret at the bottom of the tower through the secret means to help find Ziegelbert. Right, Brian? I can't believe our good fortune, Pineleaf. A secret passage Thuramen has brought us up through has brought us here. You must aid the Golden Host as they do battle throughout the tower. I will find Ziegelbert and meet up with you later. Very well. You'll find Ziegelbert. We'll see if we'll see who gets the Ziegelbert first, right? Uh, well, we do have this orc here. And Broin disappears behind that door. So we won't have to worry about him. Of course, this is a skirmish, and I think it's been a while since I... I don't think I've... Exp I noted that since we started doing these skirmishes here in Mirkwood, but skirmishes are playable in various different ranges. You have the... Solo skirmishes, as I'm doing here, or you could run it with two duo. You can run it with a three. You can run it with six, or you can run it with twelve. Now, if you run it with four, you wind up running the version for six. So you have to round up when you are dealing with higher numbers. So you don't want to have seven in a skirmish, at least. Unless you're looking for an extra challenge, in which case, yeah. That's the main reason why you might run seven in a skirmish. But if you are not looking for an extra challenge or anything like that, then you probably don't want to run a skirmish with seven. Now, how you split that up, maybe... Well, I suppose from the point of view of numbers, three, two, and two would be fine. Right. Yeah, that might be possible. Three, two, and two. But as I said, looking for a little extra challenge there. Of course, you could do four and three if you have one group looking for an extra challenge and the other one not. Or five and two. Actually, five and two might be a little bit better, a little bit more of a balance there since you still have a little team up with the two and the five is not as missing in members, as it would otherwise be. As I said, depends on the group, what they're looking for in the skirmish. Right now, what I'm looking for is to finish this chapter of the story. This is actually the finale to Volume 2. Now, it's not the finale to third season of Complete Pine Leaf, because we do have and in what to worry about. And there is one more skirmish that I have not unlocked, and that's the one at the beginning of Volume 3. So I would like to get that unlocked. Oh. Hornblower. Alright. Or Pale Trapper is going here, but he's blowing a horn, and so many pale folk that you run into in some areas are called horn blowers that yeah I think it was a pale horn blower right so yeah he does some trapping as soon as he blows that crazy horn of his there you go and now to the other side now of course this is a 
probably the most story driven of all of the skirmishes. So of course you have a couple of talking points in there. Now you do have the point in Assault and Ring Raid's lair where halfway through the boss gives you a lecture before opening the gate for the second half of the skirmish. So yes, there are a couple of other places where you can have pauses like that for story elements, but well, you'll see when we get there. <laughs> this one's notorious on that matter. Which, since I'm running this right now, as pretty much story-wise, maybe for the first time with this character, I think it makes a little bit of sense on how long everything takes at the end, but I know people don't like it when they're doing this skirmish about the twelfth time <laughs> and they're saying, ah, could you hurry up? Yeah. Alright, now this way, does he know encounters? Well, actually, this is the first encounter right he would be right here anyway. And then we do have the, oh, hello. Oh, okay, let's and speaking of first encounters, we have one right up ahead here. And I know someone I was doing this with last night was looking for this encounter. I was hoping, hey, maybe we can get this encounter. This is the, one of the ones that he still needs to do in order to finish things up. And, nope. Didn't have any luck on that. Oh well, that's the tricky thing there is when you're trying to get all of the encounters, either you're looking for the encounter title for the skirmish, or you're looking for the title Skirmisher of Middle Earth, either one of those. And trying to get that last encounter is always, always, always a trial. And by the way, I'm wearing Stopper of Thievery and Mischief, which is Obviously, as you can guess from the name, is the one you get for doing all the encounters in... Oh, hello! <laughs> I forgot about him! Oh, boy! <laughs> that would have been bad news if I activated him while in the middle of finding the encounter. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Pay attention. Make sure the room is clear before you start grabbing everything. Well, I suppose if there was one weak one in there or something like that, it wouldn't be so bad, but... Yeah. But an Echo of Death is a real pain. Oh, here he is. Okay. Oh, my. Actually, I was hoping to wait a couple seconds. I forgot that I had quickly already taken two of them. So he comes out when a death echo is still up. Which is not good. Don't be too fast in picking those up if you just fought an echo of death. Because death echo is nasty because essentially it doubled the damage that he was doing on me at the beginning of that fight. Fortunately, I'm a warden. Which means plenty of hit points and plenty of ability to recover morale once after taking a little bit of a beating. And I gotta get rid of this wound here. Done! One encounter done! New deed! The battle in the tower. Whee! In case you're wondering why am I running this at level 65, since you can set the skirmish from any level from 60 on up to level cap. Actually, back in the days when Mirkwood was was just released. Many of the skirmishes Uh oh. Ah Good grief. Uh, yeah, the Mirkwood skirmishes could be run up to five levels above the cap. That was back when the that was at the start of the whole thing. But once they raised the level cap to... S oh, come on! 
Good grief. That's why I didn't want that to happen, because there's a second counterattack. Oh, a troll wound taker. So there was this brief period where you could actually run a skirmish up to five levels above the level above the level cap. But I think when they raised it the level cap to seventy five, they decided from now on the level cap would be it. That would be the maximum level you could run the skirmish. Now it's possible it might have varied on skirmish. It might have, it might have been that that was only possible on the Dol Guldor skirmishes. I can't be completely sure on that because the Dol Guldor skirmishes used to have a minimum level of 60. And of course there were some complaints on that because you would get to this part of the story before you're level 65. And you had to wait till you're 65 in order to finish up the last couple of skirmishes it's for oh another echo of death wonderful all right let's see if i could get this one alone down here down here down here there you go now good place to fight the echo of death and that and a troll's going to appear on the back and start smashing me right they may get some extra help from Flax. No, she won't f fire at the Echo of Death. Because soldiers don't like any debuff that it gives you. Let's see, six, five, four, three. By the time I get up there, it should be finished. Well, it was before the first time it hit me, so. Good enough! So ever since Isengard was released, the yeah, skirmishes, you couldn't run it above the level cap. So that's how things went. I don't know why that decision was made at first in order to have you be able to run it a little bit above and why they changed it back. Maybe the being allowed to run it above was a bug or something like that. And it's always a possibility. And if it were a bug, then, there, there you go. Then if it were a bug, then that would explain what happened is they fixed the bug and it was no longer a problem. Now, another crazier level bug was that there was a lieutenant called the Brood Queen. It's a lieutenant that's only available in group skirmishes. You don't run into them if you're running the solo version of the skirmish. And if you're doing that, the Brood Queen, you have this lieutenant called the Brood Queen. That's all fine and good, except it turned out that the Brood Queen would not appear above level 60. So apparently there's a typo where, the, where they have in their tables a level range for each of the mobs in the skirmish. I don't know why they needed a level range for them since outside the skirmish itself I don't see any variation in a skirmish once you run it, once you're within the level range of skirmish, of how it goes between one level or the other. So I have no idea why there's a table that gives you a max level in the first place. So what happened is, when they increased the level cap to 75, because the Brood Queen wasn't listed as having a level cap of 65, it did not get updated either. Which meant that, yes, we still had no brood queens. Well, I guess there's only one more choice for the second encounter then. Yep. 
Now, when the low cap was 65 and you're working on the deed for the Brood Queen, okay, you could run your skirmishes at level 60. Still get the Brood Queens if you're lucky enough to get one in an encounter. And complete the deed. And fortunately, when they raised the cap to 65, then once you got eight levels, no, too high to get XP, you could no longer get credit for the deed. As a result, oh, as a result of that, he had an incompletable deed, so there were enough bug reports filled in that when they were coming on to raise the level cap again for Rohan, we reminded the devs, oh, by the way, could you please remember to fix the Brood Queens? And that's when they got around to it. And with the Brood Queen fixed, now you can finish the deed regardless of level. But once they fixed it on that case, it was never a problem again. There you go. Now, we got a little sliver of XP left. Looks like I might even have to beat level before the boss fight, which is the reason why I wanted to do this at 65, if I did not explain that before. I think I started bringing that up in the conversation, never finished the thought there. And I did that so that I would not level before the finish because if you do that you take a penalty on the on the marks you get is that it yeah that's it all right what is this is this some trick you cannot have been such a fool to come here i feared i would need to hunt you down but you have saved me the trouble. You caused me such trouble while you were alive. This is Mazak, of course. <laughs> My kingdom stolen by dwarves. To be shackled and brought to prison by nightmares, you have jailed alongside a dwarf. Mazak! But I, mere imprisonment, did not last long. There are still orcs in this tower who respect the name of Mazog, ruler of caves. I swore I would end you, Mazog, and I will see it done. It is not to be, lowly dwarf. I came to this chamber for a reason. You see that axe up there. With this axe of Mithril, not even the ruler of the tower can keep Mazog at bay, a prisoner, but first you die. Yeah, uh, that's why I stand back there is so that I can ambush him. Though I really should have remembered earlier to activate the careful steps. I could have done that earlier in the fight. So as soon as the fight begins, I could go and smack him. But anyway, yeah, and he turns green there. You have not one pine leaf. The orcs of Moria will avenge my death. Hear me, Broin, and let your courage seep away. Wherever your people catch a glint of gold, or silver, or gems beneath the mountains, there will be an orc to slay him. Everyone, that is my vow. That is the word of Mazog. I too have taken an oath, Mazog. See it now fulfilled. And he, of course, said, once he's done everything else, got Z over back and rescued Bori, he will kill Mazog. Mazog's down. No, we don't get to kill him. Broin gets to kill him. Which story-wise is fitting, but hmm, could be unsatisfying if you're just doing this for the skirmish. It's done. Mazax is defeated, and Ziegelbert is returned. And I get to see what's in the chest.
A bounty, of course. Completed. Allies of the key. Oh. <laughs> Completed. One thing to Oh, boy. I'm getting all these level 65 deeds here. To the Hill of Dark Sorcery. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Mazak has fallen, and Ziegelbert has returned. It's a good day to be a dwarf. Let us head back and celebrate with some ale. We have survived. The battle may be over, but some stories have not had their endings. We have had victory, Pineleaf. At least so much victory as we have a right to expect. We cannot hold this fortress. And it may not be long before the enemy strikes back at us with such a force as it will take to push us back across the river. Lothlorien will be attacked. That much is certain. But this is a victory if we have delayed the attack by even a single day. My heart tells me that we have. And by keeping the eyes of the enemy drawn to the doorstep of the fortress of the Nazgûl, we have done what Lord Kelleborg and Lady Galadriel wished us to do. The battle may be over, for now. But some stories have not had their endings. That is the way of life, is it not? It has been my pleasure to fight alongside you, Pineleaf. In this campaign, may your story go on and on. The Assault of the Golden Host on Dol Guldur has achieved what Lord Caliborn sought, to delay the forces of the enemy from mounting the attack upon Lothlorien. And yet, not all stories are ended, and there is more to tell of the elves than dwarves. <laughs>